Thanks for tuning in to Atoscope, where we talk about business, sports, and marketing. I'm Brian Cristiano, CEO of Bold Worldwide, and this is episode number 54. I talk to Golden Harper, co-founder of Ultra Footwear. Sports marketing expert, Brian Cristiano. Brian Cristiano. Brian Cristiano. Sports fans are arguably the most passionate people probably on the face of this planet. Marketers and advertisers and brands always have to keep in mind, you have to play to the state of your audience. If you're not passionate, do something else. Golden Harper, one of the founders of Ultra Footwear, which started in the back of a running shop just trying to figure out how to make shoes a little bit more comfortable for people, which then quickly turned into a company and has blown up into one of the biggest disruptors in the running market that we've ever seen. An amazing guy, an amazing company, and somebody to really pay attention to. Well, Golden, thanks for, thanks for coming on Out of Scope. I appreciate your time. I know you're a busy guy. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Where are you now? Are you in Utah? I know you've been traveling a lot. Yeah, I'm uh, in my office right next to the mountains, and uh, yeah, first time I've been in here in a week and a half, I think, so it's been crazy. Good, good. Well, cool. For anybody who doesn't know, why don't you give me the elevator pitch of what your company is, what's Ultra? Um, You know, I grew up working in a running store, and uh, where the the marketing is and and where the science are are kind of two very different places, and, and, um, you know, really wanted to help people not be injured. Most people come in the door to buy shoes because something hurts. And, um, you know, we, we found something that uh, seemed to help people in, in uh, getting people's feet to relax and spread out and their toes to really spread. And then uh, on the video, we found out that, you know, regular running shoes are making people run with, with more impact and more forces. And, um, you know, I cut up a pair of shoes in the toaster oven and, and got the heel cushioning and the forefoot cushioning to be the same. At that point in time back then, the heel cushioning was always twice as thick as the forefoot, uh, which is the case for about 99% of shoes still today. Um, and that made people run better, uh, made them run more naturally, and still have a cushion supportive shoe. And uh, you know, the whole thing is just kind of a labor of love um, to get people to run better and with less injury. And uh, I studied these things in college, and you know, that's really where my passion is—is is making better injury-free runners. So that's that's kind of what Ultra is all about. Spread your toes, get your feet in your natural position, and, and uh, stay healthy. I like it. Um, obviously, when you first started this and, and you, you made that major change to shoes, and, and I know that it was a very big deviation from what the rest of the major companies out there that were doing it. What was the reaction when you guys tried to come out with this new shoe that was totally different than anyone else's? Um, you know, it was funny because in the meantime, like, um, barefoot running hit. Um, and so it was right at the first part of barefoot running and minimalist shoes. And, uh, so all the minimalists were like, why did you make a zero drop foot shaped shoe with so much cushioning, you know? And then of course all of the, uh, you know, traditionalists or traditional shoe companies were like, oh, it's just another minimalist shoe, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, it's, there really weren't. I guess very many minimalist shoes at the time, so it was just nobody knew what to do with what we had. They they just never seen anything like it. And then of course the foot shaped toe box. If, if you've never seen it before, it just looks strange to you at first to have a shoe that's actually shaped like your foot in a sock. And so that was probably the biggest thing is people having to deal with um, just the look is so different, you know. And, and what was it that? you know, was there a moment in time, like, obviously, there was a lot of people that didn't quite understand it. What was the, what was the, the shift, the paradigm shift to where Ultra went from this kind of crazy idea to like a functioning company with customers? Um, you know, I don't know that there was a moment because our growth curve has been really steady. I mean, from the very beginning, it's basically been, we've just doubled every year and we're four and a half years in now. And the growth curve stayed almost exactly the same the entire way. So it's really been a steady climb. Um, and that, to me, is because this is mostly about word of mouth. Mm. Um, you have to try these shoes on. You have to experience them to understand them. Otherwise, they're just weird-looking shoes. Um, and so, uh, you know, and people are, quote-unquote, you know, afraid of, of um, you know, things that are different. And so they, they really have to be tried to be believed. And so a lot of times it takes... Um, a friend saying, man, I got these shoes, they help me to run better, they get my toes to spread and relax, they've got rid of these injuries for me, and uh, you need to try them, or like try my pair on, you know, Mm -hmm. and so I think it's been just kind of a really steady growth, because, 
uh, at the end of the day, word of mouth is is really what grows this thing in in my book. So. And and what do you think it is um, that keeps these people coming back? And is it a different customer than the regular running customer, or is it somebody different? Um, you know, it's a lot of the regular running customers, but uh, you know, one of our our actually probably biggest foothold is in through hiking. Uh, I believe we officially now have the, the number one brand on the through hiking circuit. So people hiking like the PCT, for example, uh, from from Canada to Mexico. Um, you know, we've had people do shoe counts there, and we seem to be far and away the number one brand. And it's really just about you know comfort and getting your foot and your body back into its natural position. People don't realize that shoes cause the vast majority of foot problems in in countries where they don't wear shoes or they only wear um, like sandals uh, with open toe boxes, the incidence of foot problems is only 3%, even in, in island nations or places where people are overweight. Uh, where in America, where basically all of our shoes are twice as thick in the heel and the toe boxes are tapered, 73% of us have foot problems. And so that we report actually. And so really it's about you know getting people's feet back into their natural position and that's really what sets us apart and has people coming back is because once you've put your foot in the natural position and it got used to it, it doesn't want to go back into something that alters the foot out of its natural position and is less comfortable. And at the end of the day, I think that's probably the key word is just pure comfort. Mm. And, you know, what is it that's keeping Ultra? You guys have had, you know, year over year exponential growth in the last four years, which is awesome. Congrats. But what is it that is keeping you separated, keeping Ultra separated from the other bigger shoe companies out there that just have A, a lot more money, B, a lot more time in the industry, but you guys are eating up that market share. You know, how is it that you're taking such a you know piece of the pie as you're continuing to grow, um, being this disruptor in the space? Um, I think, for one, uh, we're still the only ones really doing it. Nobody else is making cushion zero drop foot shaped shoes right now. Um, and so that's a, that's a huge piece of it. People have come kind of close in one way or another, but uh, you know, nobody's really done what we're doing. And another is we're just authentic. You know, um, I, you know, I have a pretty storied running background, and, and most of the guys that work for us, we're, we're real runners, we're real people, we're, we're not like trying to fake something we're not we're just saying like this is who we are this is what we do and, and these are the shoes we do it in and um you know a lot of people have said to me like i was at new york marathon expo and i had multiple people say to me there's no other shoe brand out there that the founder of the company who's a pretty serious hardcore runner would be working in the booth selling shoes mm. and yet can run a sub 15 5k on a good day you know so right um i think i think that's a lot of it. it's just our our realness in a lot of ways and how do you keep how do you bring that to a marketing perspective where you keep that realness but obviously you need to grow word of mouth is great but i assume you're doing more than just word of mouth how do you translate that authenticity into marketing um you know i think the the biggest thing for me is like i i try and make sure that we um uh, we, we say things in a way that connects, so I, I really spend time on making sure that our wording is authentic and that the way things look is authentic and that, you know, uh, that our marketing excites me, you know, uh, because if it doesn't and it doesn't excite our team, then how is it supposed to excite other people who are also real runners mm. and real outdoor enthusiasts? Um, so I think that's a lot of it. It's just kind of like, you know, we have this zero limits thing that we go off of and embrace the space. And, and really, it's just trying to embody that whole zero limits idea and, and getting people excited about getting out there and, and going after it and having a good time and being able to have shoes that, that let them be more free and more natural than anything else out there. So you guys are your own barometer as far as marketing is concerned. If you don't like it, it doesn't roll. Yeah, I think I think a, a lot of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think to a lot of it because we are most, we are our target audience for the most part. You mm -hmm. know, that, that always makes it good. That's the same for us. We work with sports brands. We're you know I'm a cyclist and and uh, Kyle who is emailing with you. He's a he's an ultra marathon runner, et cetera. So it's like yeah, same thing. It's a it's a tight community. It's all based in passion. So, um, what's been your biggest marketing challenge growing ultra? Oh, biggest marketing challenge, sheesh. Um, you know, I think the hardest thing is our shoes are, are so different that it's really difficult to communicate how different they are 
mm-hmm. and the features and the benefits thereof. Mm-hmm. And trying to get the benefits across to people uh, is really difficult, especially uh, just in, in today's FCC space. It's really hard to say what you want to say mm-hmm. and say what you know to be true. Um, even if you have, you know, some, you know, information to back it up, it's it's really difficult for us because you know it's it's frustrating to me, sim- you know, personally, just because I can't come out and say the things I want to say in an ad, basically. Right. And I think getting across the benefits to people and how our shoes are so different is really probably the biggest challenge we face. And how are you guys overcoming that? Is have you done anything, or are you just still trying to figure that out? Um, you know, uh, one way for us has been TV. Uh, TV gives us more time, um, and it gives us visuals, and and then of course our YouTube channel as well. Um, you know, making YouTube videos and stuff, and promoting those, and social media. All those give us more ways to describe the features and benefits of the shoes and the products to people than we can do in a print ad. Mm. And you know, we still do print ads, um, but you know these kind of longer form media formats uh, communicate who we are and what we're all about you you know, get, in a, a little bit stronger way. You get the time to tell the story. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because you guys have such a strong story. What do you wish, what do you wish as a, either yourself or your company understood better about marketing or business growth in, in general? Um, what do I wish you understood better? That is an excellent question. Um, Sheesh. You know, logistics are always a challenge for us. And, um, you know, growing it at this rate, um, trying to sustain growth and uh, make the right decisions while doing so is, is probably the thing that I, I don't know that anybody really understands because growth rates can be unique and whatnot. But that's, that's the one thing I think if we could crack that code, that'd be sweet. <laughs> yeah. Have you guys had trouble either staffing or, or, or do you kind of like staff late in the process as, as far as, you know, because obviously you're growing so quickly? Is that been a um, Yeah. I mean, we're always adding people. So um, staffing is always a challenge, getting the right people in the right seats and, and then having to kind of change up your responsibilities too, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's only one of me. There's only one of, of the other guys that you know were around in the early days, and and you want that kind of ethos and that that stuff to all be passed down to everybody, and and getting it out there is hard. So that's that's definitely a challenge for sure. One last marketing question: If you could only, if you only had one choice for next year to do only one thing from a marketing perspective, you couldn't do anything else. What would that one one thing be? Um, do events and expos count? Sure. I would probably just blitz like a bajillion small events and expos. Why? Because on in-person interactions? Yep, we're getting shoes on feet. And at the end of the day, I can shut my mouth up and put a shoe on a foot and things click. You know, people put them on like, oh, dang, that is comfortable. Or they go run a few steps and, oh, wow, that does make me run different and better. Mm-hmm. Um, and oh wow, my toes can really do spread and relax a lot more than they do in a traditional shoe. And being able to get that hands-on experience is just massive. And so um, I think if we could only choose one thing, you know, I would just choose like a thousand little expos to do, a thousand little events. (laughs) Let the product speak for itself, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta have good product. All right, What, uh, what does the word passion mean to you? Oh man. Uh, sheesh. I mean, passion is that you care at the end of the day. And, um, I think passion is a lot of why Ultra is successful because we have a lot of people that really care about this brand and really feel very strongly about it. And, um, almost everybody who's come into the company, um, especially the first few years here, uh, came in because our shoes fixed a problem they had or, or solved an injury they were dealing with. And so, uh, you know, from me to everyone else, these shoes have helped change, make our lives better. Mm. And as a result, you know, everybody's really, you know, passionate about the product and they feel really strongly about it. And so that passion is huge. And so I think to me, that's the big thing is it's easy to have passion for something if it, if it helped make your life better. And uh, I think that's what drives passion is that, that strong feeling or that intense care um, for something and then your uh, desire to want to broadcast that to the world um, makes you care about it so much. That's, that's passion to me. Makes it fun to get up in the morning. 
Yeah, exactly. If you could go back and tell your 20-year-old self one thing, what would it be? 20-year-old self, one thing. Oh, man. Um, man, I don't know. I don't have a lot of regrets, so this is a difficult one. I would... Um, I don't know. Probably... I moved to Hawaii for a couple of years and that totally changed when I was like 25, 24, 25. And that totally changed me and made me a way more chill person. Mm. And I, I think that would have benefited me a lot before. And so if I could tell my 20 year old self something, I'd probably tell my 20 year old self to move to Hawaii now um, <laughs> and get that experience and, and uh, you know, take that vibe with me. I like it. That's awesome. That's a good one. Go move to Hawaii. I like that. I think any 20 year old would, would say, all right, I'm, yeah. I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> and it, all right, last question. If you could play, if you had to give everything else up, but you could play one professional sport, what would it be? Um, sh I enjoy football the most, mm. but basketball is a close second, and there's not as much collateral damage. So I think if I had to play one professional sport, I would probably – uh, play play basketball unless we're talking like Olympic sports and I you can go actually, you go any sport, sport you want any so I can still sport. run is that what you're saying sure you'll be running okay. you know I've kind of run professionally so yeah um, yeah I, I, I professional trail run yeah peak bagging if you know maybe nice. sky running circuit something nice. like that that's awesome yeah. well cool Golden thank you so much for for giving me this time man it's uh it's exciting to talk to you and. Uh, uh, anything that we should look out for from Ultra, from the disruptions part of the space? Um, you know, um, you know, we chatted a little earlier before the show here, but uh, yeah, we we we've, we've got a shoe coming out that will help coach you. Not just um, I've always said our coach, our shoes are like a coach in a box. You simply put them on and they help you to run better. Mm -hmm. And we have a shoe that uh, will interact with your smartphone and help teach you to become a better, more efficient less impact, um, you know, hopefully less injured runner. And that's, you know, coming up before the middle of next year. So it's gonna be a super cool thing. And, uh, you know, especially for runners who receive basically no technique training whatsoever. It's basically the only sport out there where, you know, coaches just say, okay, go run, you know, right. and people are never taught how to protect their bodies. So we're really excited about getting that out there because it furthers our message across the board. And uh, it, I think it, it enhances all of our other shoes and just tells that message of run better, run healthier, run ultra. Awesome. Well, Golden, thanks so much for your time, man. This was really exciting. Glad to talk to you. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks so much for tuning in to episode 54. I really hope you enjoyed it and hope you got something out of Golden. Really cool dude, amazing, amazing company, some really great products, and I think they're one of the companies that are doing it really, really well. I would really pay attention to them. If you like this, please make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and make sure to share this with other people because the more that watch it, the better the content is gonna be. Make sure to tune in for episode 55 where Kyle and I talk about business and marketing and drink some more tequila.